the Achaemenids. The Medes and Persians were closely related groups who settled on the land of what is now Iran. The Medes settled to the west and north, while the Persians lived in the center and the south of the land. Near the Elamites, a wide-ranging kingdom was first established by the Medes, stretching from the borders of what is now Turkey to the Indus River in the east. This was unified with the Persian king by Cyrus the Great, who formulated the first great Persian empire named for his house, the Achaemenids. The Achaemenid Empire would last for over 300 years at its height this realm encompassed well over 20 different countries and kingdoms which included Egypt, Libya, Babylonia, Assyria, Israel, Thrace, Ionia, Cappadocia, Macedonia, Armenia, Anshan, Parthia, Media, Lydia, Bactria, Sogdia, Gandaria, Saka, Scythia, Ethiopia, India, Northwest, and many more. This was the world's first true empire with an emperor, a king of Kings, Pers, Shahansha, governing a far flung network of quasi independent kingdoms. Cyrus, Persian, Karush, would rule from the ceremonial capital of Pasagradi for 31 years until his death in battle against the northern Iranian Masijitai. Cyrus was so great a leader and visionary that even his enemies, for example, the Greeks, deemed him the paragon of leadership, the ideal ruler. It was said that men followed him because they wanted to do so, and nations wanted to be under his rule. He won many battles, and when the enemy willingly surrendered to him, this is how he conquered Babylon. The Babylonians had heard of Cyrus' kind and generous policies towards those who he vanquished. The Babylonians were wary of their oppressive kings, and so they willingly opened the gates to the advancing Persian army. When Cyrus addressed the conquered city, the people expected that they might be enslaved. Instead, Cyrus told them they were free and did not claim victory in the name of his own god, Ohura Mazda, but credited the Babylonian god Marduk with giving him the power to govern Babylon. We know from the inscriptions that Cyrus did credit Ohura Mazda with his power to rule, yet his understanding of the one supreme god allowed him to see that other men's gods were but reflections of the one divine glory. At the same time, politically and psychologically, as Cyrus expressed his ideas in terms the conquered people were ready to hear and could understand, he knew he would communicate with the people and make them understand his wishes more clearly. He consciously wanted to establish a new way of governing based on the concept of wisdom. Cyrus also famously liberated the Jewish people who were held in captivity in Babylon at the time. He allowed them to return to Jerusalem and finance their building of their temple there. He also used Jewish troops to administer parts of his empire, for example, the Elephantine in Egypt. It was a general Persian practice not to send Persians to rule in the conquered nations, but rather to let them rule themselves, and the forces needed to control any rebellions were usually made up of troops from other nations, foreign legions, if you will, not Persians. This way, the Persians could in general maintain their prestige as being above the fray and not involved in any sort of oppressive activity. Cyrus's rule was followed by a series of less magnificent, yet usually very capable emperors. Cambyses II, 530 to 522, took the throne by killing his brother Bardio. He then defeated the Egyptians at the Battle of Pelusium in 525 and brought Egypt, Libya, and Nubia into the Persian Empire. Egypt would be a part of the Persian Empire for long stretches between 525 and 332 BCE, and the Persian Emperor would rule as the pharaoh during the 27th and 31st dynasties of Egypt, a sorcerer named Gamalta, assumed the identity of the dead Baridyao, and staged a revolt in Egypt. While this uprising continued, Cambyses died in Syria. Darius I, Daryahush, 522-532, through 486, then came to the power and killed Gamalta at once. 
carried out campaigns in Egypt to expand the empire there and went on to widen Persian territories in the east, pushing into the Indus River and beyond the Oxus and Zaktartus in the northeast. Most faithfully, he crossed the Bosphorus and brought Thrace and Macedonia north of the Greek city-states into the empire. A punitive raid against the Greek states was thwarted by Marathon 490 by the Athenians. Darius died as he prepared to campaign further against the Greeks. Darius I also given the moniker the Great. It was he who really designed the Persian Empire as a work of statecraft based on the foundations of Cyrus and fueled by the philosophy of Zarathustraism. He finished the ceremonial and political center known as Persepolis, subterranean Persepolis, city of the Persians, works of civil engineering such as a system of subterranean aqueducts were completed. These brought a steady supply of water to the desert plains road were developed through the empire. A carrier system was used which kept the emperor in close contact with all areas of this far-flung realm. Herodotus wrote of the Pony Express system. It is said that as many days as there are in the whole journey, so many are the men and horses that stand along the road. Each horse and man is an interval of a day's journey, and these are stayed neither by show, snow nor by heat, nor darkness from accomplishing their appointed course with all speed. Histories 8.98. Darius was succeeded by his son Xerxes Tashariasha the first 496-465, who continued the conflict of Greece, the Ottoman Empire, included many Greek-speaking areas in what is now Turkey and the Balkan Peninsula. It was in defense of these areas against disrupted Greek city-states, e.g. Athens and Sparta, that the Persians first started to come in conflict with. Greece power. Thus began the fateful Greco-Persian Wars 500 through 479 BCE. This conflict featured two major campaigns of Persians invaded the heart of the Greek homeland. The first ended in the Battle of Marathon 490 BCE when the Athenians defeated the Persian army which returned to the Persian Empire <coughs> over the Aegean Sea in the second campaign. A Persian army of 100,000 men led by the Emperor Xerxes himself crossed the Bosphorus into Greece. They were famously de delayed in September of 490 by a relatively small contingent of 300 Spartans along with 5,600 other troops at Thermopylae. The Persians conquered Athens, sacked the city, and occupied the city heartland for 10 years. Then the Greeks won the naval battle of Salamis 480 BCE, and eventually the Persians retreated back into Asia Minor. In the end, the Greek city-states of Athens and Sparta won the struggle to free themselves of Persian influence and proceeded to tear each other apart. Culturally and historically, we usually only hear the Greek side of the story. It is couched in terms of West versus East, freedom and virtue versus tyranny and decadence. This model of propagandistic understanding reverberates to this day because it works so well. And the point of fact of the Persian Empire allowed constituent kingdoms great freedom and provided for their peaceful existences and interactions. Several Greek city-states had willingly joined the Persian Empire. On the other hand, most of the other Greek city-states were constantly at war with each other and falling into tyranny both from within and without in a chaotic historical melodrama. One of the great myths of history and one we see played out in historical as well as other media accounts of these times is that the confrontation between Greece and Iran was one of freedom and tyranny. Nothing could be further from the truth. One need only look as far as astonishing cultural fact. Greece was the dependent on slavery. Half of the people in Greek city-state were slaves, yet slavery was banned in the Persian Empire. Cyrus and the other emperors paid their workers, only sold prisoners of war to other slave-holding nations. This aversion of practice of slavery stems directly from the practice of the Zarathustrian ethics. There was little that was admirable about Greek democracy. Socrates was democratically put to death. 
remember that democracy is only two wolves and a sheep voting on 